Welcome to our time of scripture reading and devotional reflection for Monday, May the 9th, 2022. My name is Pastor Brian J. Monroe, and this is coming to you from my office in Kitimat First Baptist Church in beautiful Kitimat, British Columbia. I have three passages of scripture to read for you today uh, so that you can hear scripture read. And may that affect you in an interesting way that maybe you're not used to because you read it or you hear it just simply preached about. But I'm, I'm just here to read scripture to you and let the word do its work. So I'll read these three passages and a devotional written by Oswald Chambers from his classic daily devotional, My Utmost for His Highest. Let's begin with Psalm 100. A psalm for giving thanks. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 15 to 28. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, take a stick and write on it for Judah and the people of Israel associated with him. Then take another stick and write on it, for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and all the house of Israel associated with him. And join them one to another into one stick, that they may become one in your hand. And when your people say to you, will you not tell us what you mean by these? Say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am about to take the stick of Joseph that is in the hand of Ephraim and the tribes of Israel associated with him, and I will join it with the stick of Judah and make them one stick, that they may be one in my hand. When the sticks on which you write are in your hand before their eyes, then say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will take the people of Israel from the nations among which they have gone, and will gather them from all around, and bring them to their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land, on the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king over them all, and they shall be no longer two nations, and no longer divided into two kingdoms. They shall not defile themselves any more with their idols and their detestable things, or with any of their transgressions. But I will save them from all the backslidings in which they have sinned, and will cleanse them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. My servant David shall be king over them, and they shall all have one shepherd, They shall walk in my rules and be careful to obey my statutes. And they shall dwell in the land that I gave to my servant Jacob, where your fathers lived. They and their children and their children's children shall dwell there forever. And David my servant shall be their prince forever. I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will set them in their land and multiply them, and will set my sanctuary in their midst forevermore. My dwelling place shall be with them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Then the nations will know that I am the Lord who sanctifies Israel when my sanctuary is in their midst forever. Revelation chapter 15 verses 1 to 4. Then I saw another sign in heaven, great and amazing, seven angels with seven plagues, which are the last, for with with them the wrath of God is finished. 
and I saw what happened, what appeared to be a sea of glass mingled with fire, and also those who had con conquered the beast and its image and the number of its name standing beside the sea of glass with harps of God in their hands. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and amazing are your deeds, O Lord God, the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the nations. Who will fear, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. Almighty and most powerful Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for the gracious provision of your word to us. It is a fine and perfect gift coming down from you. May you grant us the power through the Holy Spirit to receive it, to understand it, to take it into ourselves and have it work what is good and pleasing to your will in us and to your glory. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Now, from Oswald Chambers, My Utmost for His Highest, we read, Grasp Without Reach. There is no revelation. People cast off restraint. Where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint. But blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instructions. Proverbs 29, verse 18. There is a difference between an ideal and a vision. An ideal has no moral inspiration. A vision has. The people who give themselves over to ideals rarely do anything. A man's conception of deity may be used to justify his deliberate neglect of his duty. Jonah argued that because God was a God of justice and of mercy, therefore everything would be all right. I may have a right conception of God, and that may be the very reason why I do not do my duty. But wherever there is vision, there is also a life of recititude, because the vision imparts a moral incentive. Sorry, that should have been rectitude. Ideals may lull to ruin. Take stock of yourself spiritually and see whether you have ideals only or if you have vision. Ah, but a man's reach should not exceed his grasp or what's a heaven for? Where there is no vision, when once we lose sight of God, we begin to be reckless we cast off certain restraints, we cast off praying, we cast off the vision of God in little things and begin to act on our own initiative. If we are eating what we have out of our own hand, doing things on our own initiative without expecting God to come in, we are on the downward path. We have lost the vision. Is our attitude today an attitude that springs from our vision of God? Are we expecting God to do greater things than he has ever done? Is there a freshness and vigor in our spiritual outlook? Let us pray. Father, infuse us with vision. Keep us safe from ideals. Keep us safe from concepts. Only, only involve us with you in that relationship, that great and wild and terrible yet wonderful relationship that you can have us in so that we can be informed by your vision of all things. The vision you give to us, the vision that you Im impose, imprint, impress upon us, that we might rise to it and find ourselves in beautiful concert and relationship with your Holy Spirit. We pray this to your great glory in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, our Savior, and our soon returning King. 
Again, friends, I thank you for spending a bit of time today listening to Scripture being read and uh, considering how it is that vision is what informs our discipleship in God. Until we're able to be together again to do more of the same, I bid you, in the name of Jesus Christ, Shalom.